weekend go by in a bit of a flash, that is, didn't quite keep abreast of all the goings on in week two. Well, before all the toys disappear out of your crib, get a grip, because you've come to the place where nothing slips through the fingers. So slip on the chaps, slop on the body paint, and slap on the horns, because it's time to enter the dark side of the Super 14 Luke, the plays of week two. Let's begin with the most important of the awards, the Percy. And some bent over backwards to try and grab the title this week, didn't they, Douglas? Vickers Van Heerden's entry was textbook, although some weren't quite so sure. Oh, was that a knock-on? Was that a knock-on? Well, I would have said it doesn't get more obvious than that, but I would have been wrong. It's been knocked on by Sam Harris. And while Luke McAllister threw up an entry that would at least make the dice in most weeks, he's paled into insignificance as we saw a rare facial Percy from Callum Bruce that took bronze. Yeah. <laughs> well, the nightmare right. continues for Callum Bruce. Not one, but two try-blowing contenders from the Chiefs were bundled up and presented with the silver Percy statuette. By how many chances do they want? But not only did the Hurricanes do them on the scoreboard, they also stole the Golden Percy, a Wellington legend delivering an entry good enough to go straight into the Hall of Fame, showing even the best can have a bad night. 13 gold, did he ground? Looks like he could have lost it. That's uh, shades of Christian Cullen in Sydney a few years ago. With Percy dished out, let's move from the emotional to physical pain and the hits of the week. Troy Flavel earned a heap of votes from Brumbies fans for accidentally giving Jonathan Kaplan close up to the return. Rory Cockett's nudge on Josh Valentine was ruled ineligible due to lack of arms, while well, Lucky Molly Poller was just that, not to see something worse than yellow for this horrendous effort on Yako Pretorius and Joe Burn. Oh, that's a penalty. That might be a yellow card. I think it is. Of the legal entries, Ryan Kankowski's timing couldn't have been better catching Daniel Halangahu exposed. Oh dear. Free de Priya showed bulls can be matadors, upending a larger namesake in Pretoria. What a tackle. Julian Salvi and Greg Rawlinson were pretty level on the tail of the tape, but there was a clear points winner in this encounter. But the best hit of the week came with a couple of teammates on either end. Stephen Larkin making sure rookie Peter Playford will always remember his first five and a bit minutes of Super Rugby. A swinger with a broken nose in the history of rugby union, it's never occurred before. To the other end of the body and the kicks of the week, and there was no doubting about the best. I say in a fee was sideline match winning Brumby breaking beauty also gave us the celebration of the week as the Blues bubbled over with excitement in Canberra. And he has. What a kick! He said that too well. But before he was the hero, Mr Nathiwa gave us a look at the other end of his talents with this entry in the worst kick of the week. Callum Bruce mustn't have recovered from his facial Percy as he also struggled with the power of the halfway line. But the top two were more costly than those offerings. Caleb Ralph unable to get the ball past Peter Hines as the Reds gave the Crusaders a scare in Christchurch. Well that's thrown the cat amongst the pigeons or the uh, Queenslanders amongst the Crusaders. But the horror of the week came from the boot of rookie Greg Zampak. The Highlanders debutant proving anything but wily as Mr Human raced away with a gift five points. Into the hands of the debutant, uh, Greg Zampak. He's thrown it away to Wiley Human. Wiley Human should be in in the corner here. They won't stop him. And that is his eighth super try. Well, that took out the luckiest try category, the best try was simply a no-brainer. Is there any better sight than a rampaging front rower running away with five points. Unbelievable! Brilliant, brilliant effort from the big man. Well, before we send you into a frenzy, that's about all the cheap shots we've got time for. And as you scurry off to start sending in all those letters, or even give us a ring to complain, a warning, you'd better keep your identity a secret, or even better, take a load off. Because the season is only young, and our feelers are well and truly out, not to mention the fashion police. And next time you could find yourself the flavour of the round, like it or not, when we hand out the next edition of Plays of the Week.